welcome to Carpool Movie Critique, where every week we critique a new movie on the ride home. Today we saw Super Troopers number two. Super Troopers two! I'm doing a number two. Super <laughs> Troopers. Nice. Oh! <laughs> James, what did you think? Uh, I really enjoyed it. I uh, I went in worrying about whether or not this was going to be like a really crappy sequel, as you know most comedy sequels turn out to be. But honestly, I think it picked up kind of organically. It felt kind of like you didn't really miss anything in between the two sequels. It just kind of picked up where they left off, and I'm honestly amazed by how well they have all aged. No kidding. Right? Yeah. It's like, how many years is this? Like over 50? Seven, seven years. years. Jesus Christ. Bloody Impressive. hell. Yeah, they all look fantastic still. Uh, and yeah, I mean. Now than they did back then. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, if uh, if you're at all worried about whether or not this is going to be a crappy sequel, don't. It's it does the original justice. Yeah, if you like Super Troopers and that kind of humor, it's definitely in the same vein. Totally. Let's go. <laughs> why why do you guys think that it was that it lived up to uh, the, the original? What do you mean? Which part of the movie is, or why they made it that way? Why why they made it that way? Well, I think that it's because um, as maybe you guys are all aware. Uh, a big portion of this movie was funded by the fans, so they started a, a Indiegogo campaign. It's a crowdfunding site. Site. Uh, it was done back in 2015, so just before the hump, when uh, people stopped donating, basically for movies. Um, so they got, I think, something like 4.6 million dollars, which makes it the second highest grossing. Well, not grossing. Second highest crowdfunded movie. Uh, after Ver Veronica Mars, which was about five, five point two million, five point seven, I can't remember now. Uh, but yeah, that's those are high numbers for crowdsourcing. So that was very impressive. It's kind yeah. of crazy though. And like, so, how did it come about after over a decade, well over a decade, that they started to crowdsource? I mean, I think it was just the you know the fans were saying, "Hey, are you guys gonna do a sequel to this at all? I think it's about time you made a Super Trooper sequel." And I think they were just like. Uh, yeah, we're all up for it, but we don't have any money, so if you can get us some money, we'll Nobody totally do it. Nobody's gonna us. Yeah, but that's, I think, exactly why the movie is so um, close to the originals, because the fans founded it, and my, I'm sure that the producers, the executive producers, felt that, you know, we've got to stick to what the fans like. They made the movies, and they are the people who are going to see the movies. And so, definitely a successful endeavor in that sense. It's very loyal to the franchise, I guess. Now we can call it a franchise. And they managed to keep the cast yep. pretty much Basically exactly the same. Yeah. I think everybody was back, yeah. really. Yeah, in including the Meow Guy! The Meow Guy's back! That was they a brought nice the game. Meow back! Yeah. Like, oh my God. So many of the great one-liners and the skits came back, but in new and interesting ways. It didn't feel like they were just rehashing the same thing. Yeah. I liked the, the subtle tribute to shenanigans. That was good. Yeah. <laughs> Wasn't so subtle, was it? <laughs> so what else about the cast? Like, who did you like? You know, my favorite was definitely Thorny and all of his <laughs> experiments with the drugs. I like Thorny. Thorny and Mac were definitely my favorite. Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah they're they're exactly. the ones that draw the most attention for sure. How about, how about the rest of you guys? Oh, definitely Thorny and Mac. Thorny. Yeah. Although Mac, uh, yeah. I, I, it was kind of nice to see uh, Brian Cox back, and although I think his performance just wasn't quite as uh, interesting as the original, I think they deliberately made a step to, you know, mention to people that he wasn't going to be quite as active. So when they're all like at the beginning, like gathering around him uh -huh. and stuff, and he's like, "I'm a senior citizen." Yeah, that was that was pretty funny. Yeah. That was pretty funny. I think that was probably his best moment. <laughs> I don't know honest. the karaoke scene. Oh, okay. I'm yeah, singing! Yeah, sure. <laughs> Sit the fuck down! Sit the fuck down! I've been here an hour! <laughs> what did you guys think about Rob Lowe stepping into that role? Uh, I, I don't know. I felt like it was it was a uh, Canadian uh, Chris Traeger from Parks and Rec. It was just, <laughs> it was, he talked about eating healthy and how fat Americans were, and I was like, oh, it's Chris Traeger's Canadian cousin. <laughs> I like that. Am I the I only like one that. who's... With yeah. <laughs> yeah. Am I the only one who's fed up of Rob Lowe being the villain in a comedy movie? Yes. Yes. I agree. Oh my god. Am I the only one fed up with Rob Lowe? 
<gasps> Shut your dirty mouth! Then I am. All right. <laughs> Maybe. Okay, I have to say my favorite character, although I agree with pretty much everything you guys have said, my favorite character has to be uh, Will Sasso's character uh, because I've been... <laughs> I could not. I could not listen Amazing to him. Amazing Easter egg outtakes at the end. Stay to the end of the yeah, scene. Yeah. I mean, that was definitely game. his best... I don't know. It was his funniest moment. The oh, outtakes yeah, there. The outtakes. It was but, really funny. But as a huge fan of of uh, Mad TV back in the day, yeah. like I've just really enjoyed him. His accent is absolutely atrocious. It's flawless. Which, what are you talking about? I just can't. Which he makes sounds it sounds the same as you. <laughs> uh, by that you mean Russian, because he yeah. sounds Russian. His French, Russian. his French accent is Russian. But that's on purpose, though. So it's not. I hope so. Yeah, no, it is. It is on purpose. Those accents are supposed to be horrific, and you know, he did it. Yep, yep. And, and he did Mission it. accomplished, Will exactly. Sasso. I really loved the French accents that Thorny and uh, and Mac were doing. I think they were almost the the, the, the most the more spot on accents. When of they the were movie. just throwing out random French words, that was hilarious. That was really good. I think well that was I think my favorite scene of the whole movie. Was it was and funny, then the horses yeah. were acting up, and he couldn't get back into his dressage set. I mean, I was just loving it. Yeah, <laughs> I think so. I mean, okay, to be fair, the best accent is the woman who plays uh, Genevieve. Uh, yes, Emmanuel something. We don't know her. Sorry. <laughs> oh, sorry. So sorry. 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 Yes, sorry is the American. Sorry, I was going to get The reality sorry. is you all say it wrong. To be fair, her accent was so good just because she's actually French Canadian, so that doesn't work. That's not accurate. And beautiful. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah so uh, <laughs> anything else to add? Oh, what about Fred Sa Savage? Okay, so Fred Savage is mentioned throughout the movie, and you should stay to the end because they show you a little bit of Fred Savage, and I. Yeah. What? Spoiler! I didn't say what happens! Anywho, Fred Savage, it's a thing. So, um, yeah, one time I met Fred Savage. <laughs> uh, um, so I was working on the Sony lot in LA and I was walking to the cafeteria and uh, my friends and I had to stop off the sidewalk on the way to the cafeteria because one of them had a rock in her shoe, which is a, a good thing that we pulled over because sitting right or standing right outside the doors in the cafeteria was Ron Howard. Who no. I'm, a, I'm a big fan. Damn. I'm a big fan. So I basically lost my shit because sometimes there are just some celebrities where you can't quite keep it together. So I, I basically peed myself with excitement. <laughs> And then later in that day, I was I was recounting the story to a friend of mine, and we stepped into an elevator right at the moment where I was like, and then I peed myself, and Fred Savage was in the elevator. So I had a great conversation with Fred Savage about <laughs> peeing myself. So, what did Fred Savage have to say about that? Uh, he was really nice about the whole thing, actually. He was like, oh, okay. No, we we like, moved on to talk about food and stuff. He was very nice, and his voice is even better in person, I have to say. There you go, folks. Fred <laughs> Savage <laughs> likes pee. <laughs> no, don't say that! Allegedly. Oh, gosh. No, it just seems like he's really down to earth. Knows how to put people at ease. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And you, yeah. you can totally tell that in his teeny, teeny tiny performance that, you know, he's not afraid to, you know, make fun of himself yep. and stuff like that. Yeah, he was great. Nice, nice addition. On the next Celebrity Encounter, <laughs> <laughs> Kelly will talk about her nice phone conversation with Samuel L. Jackson, but that's for next time. <laughs> Ratings! <laughs> Tune in next time. Wait, when... no ratings. Oh, right. <laughs> I forgot. Ra 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 ratings. You tell go first. first. I do that all the time. So really hard to give a rating. I mean, we've been seeing high caliber films. I guess. <laughs> well, have we? Let's um, call it high production. High production. Well, yes. this was just so fun, though. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna go three. Three Bs. Okay. Enjoyed it. Really had a good time. All right, I'll go next. I think it's really successful at what it's doing, at what it's doing or trying to be. So, at very least two point five, there were some chuckles here and there. So I give it a three. How about you, James? As a piece of cinema, I mean, <laughs> as a piece of cinema, a whole different story. It's yeah, you you can't really say a whole lot about it, but 
you know, if you consider what it was designed to do, I think it achieves that magnificently. So as a piece of cinema, yeah, I give it two and a half. For what they were setting out to do, I'll give it a four and a half. Yeah, see, that's what I did. I was trying to be objective. Like, I had some laughs, but it's not my type of humor, so... So, so you're gonna you're gonna split the difference and put it at a what three and a half? Yeah, let's call it that. All three right. and a half. Three, three, three and a half. And Amanda. I've got to, I've got to say the same thing. If for a piece of you know a piece of cinema, you piece it of gets cinema. like a two point five, but it totally accomplished what it meant yeah. to do. And I'm a big fan of Canada. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm gonna give it a three as well. All right. Awesome. Well, thanks for tuning in, guys. We will see you next week. Maybe. We will. When we I mean, see we something else. <laughs> are we seeing something else next week? Maybe not next week. I think it's in a couple of weeks. You guys are just going to have to wait and you're going to have to like it. So <laughs> deal with it. And subscribe. Enjoy subscribe. the original content in the meantime. Yeah. See you. Creepy bye. 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 Creepy bye.